Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Okay, so if you want to have a community, um, you have to divide up social roles in some ways. There are certain things that, that every community needs in order to be a functioning community. And Plato gives you a very idealized version of the city, and you don't necessarily have to buy into this in order to see what he's, he's talking about. Here's the ideal city that he describes. You have these people he calls the guardians or the rulers, and they exercise um, precisely that sort of function. They, they're in charge. They make the big decisions, you know, about the economy or where to put in roads or, you know, what laws to enact or those sorts of things. When there's when there's problems between people, presumably they would be carrying out the, the judicial, you know, decisions, hearing cases, all that sort of stuff. They would also be in charge of um, education, at least of, of themselves and, and of certain other classes. You could think of these like in today's contemporary terms as maybe being something like, you know combination of mayors and council members and city planners and educators and all, all this sort of stuff rolled up into one class. And Plato is a little bit vague about exactly what these are going to be like. And you know, he's talking about ancient Greece, so it doesn't translate perfectly to, to our time. But you get the idea, right? So we have that class. And then we have another class, the, what he calls the auxiliaries or the lesser guardians. And these basically translate to be what nowadays, for the most part, we would call the army and the police. Um, I guess also the merchant marine, you know, because you, you need somebody to protect your shipping um, <coughs> if you actually are doing trading. So what do they do? They protect the city from outside threats, because with any community, um, Unless you have you know, a perfectly peaceful world, you're going to have some outside threats. Some people, if you have stuff, people will want your stuff. And you have to be able to protect yourself. And if you're a city, you have to be able to protect your citizens, right? Um, sometimes that actually means like, you know, going off and, and making alliances or going to war or doing these other things, hopefully on somebody else's ground than, than, than your own. Um, what about police? Well, you know, you also have to keep order within the city. Human beings are liable to do all sorts of wrong things to each other, right? And one of the functions of, of police is to try to maintain order. That's why you see them at parades, for example. Um, are they there just because, you know, cops like looking at, at spectacles and people give them the nice seats? No, they're there just in case something happens, they can reestablish order. Um, and we could probably think of other groups that, that fit in with this as well. I mean, insofar as you're dealing with, like, internal problems that aren't necessarily caused by, by human beings and their decisions, but more by the natural environment, what about firefighters? They, they would probably fit into that, that class as well. Maybe emer emergency responders could be argued to fit into that class. Then you've got everyone else. And everybody in this, this polis or city of Plato has a job that they do. And if you think about it, that's a lot like the world we live in, right? Everybody does something. Yeah, it may not be necessarily something uh, momentous, um, but they do something. Uh, even within the household, it's an awful lot of work to maintain a household, right? If somebody goes off to earn money and the other person stays home in the house, um, do we count it as a good partnership if the person who's staying in the house just sits around and watches TV all day? What are they supposed to be doing? Cleaning. Cleaning, that's a big thing. Uh, Things bills. get really dirty fast, you know. <laughs> what else? Bills. 
bills. Like maintaining home finances. They, they, they might actually be carrying out the, the financial um, arrangements. Um, they might do some shopping. cooking or shopping. Shopping is a pain, right? Anybody who's done shopping, that can take a whole day. I love food shopping. I love shopping. You love food shopping? I love food shopping. I love food shopping. <laughs> Like one of my favorites. I'd be a great. Mystery. Then you probably well, or that, or you know, you could be like a mystery shopper, or you, know, you could have some other role, right? I don't want a job. No, I want to be Mr. Mom. Like that one. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to be stay on bed. I would be. Yeah. I would be a great. <laughs> Interesting. Stay on bed. Okay. Wow. I've done. I've done stuff kind of along those lines, and, and there is something rewarding to it. I was lucky enough that with with. Um, With my kids, I, I got to stay home a good portion of the time. With them. Um, and I do a lot of cooking. I, I like, I enjoy that. I don't like going to the stores though, because it takes a lot of time. Anyway, so we have all sorts of jobs, right? Um, I didn't want to get too off track with this, but we have all, all different functions. And Plato thinks, eh, you know, everybody else, they're not as important to the running of the city and to the proper arrangement of it. They do supply some really important things. If you don't have people producing food, uh, you're going to die, right? If you don't have people producing clothing, unless you're living in a very tropical environment, uh, you're going to die. If you don't have people building houses, if you don't have people maintaining the sewers if you get big enough, if you don't have people actually buying and selling things, you're going to have some real problems. And when do things work the best in a city? When everybody sticks to their task. Because each task in, in this, this tripartite scheme, each task has its own set of importance. And can each task be done well or poorly? Yeah, there's ways you can screw this up. Just a trivial example, right? Let's take um, traffic planning. Not even city planning, just traffic planning. <clears throat> we got 9W out here. Or not 9W, it's 9. I'm thinking the other side of the river. How about those stoplights? Could those be set up in such a way as to really irritate you? Mm -hmm. How? Well, what would happen? Yeah, so you, you, you're, you're backed up in traffic, and it, it turns uh, green, and now everybody goes, and by the time you get to the next stoplight, maybe 500 yards, it's red. That happens. Yeah, and that's, you know what that is? That's bad planning. That's, that's what what's not. really bad planning is like those stupid, where it's like people are merging from the right, and then you have people merging from the left, and you have to merge all, like you have to exit to the left at the same time. Yeah. Over my about, like, I used to have to do something like that every single day in the But they did it twice in a row. I will never understand it. Like, let's, do, let's do a really terrible... There are some people that are good city planners, and there are some people that are bad city planners. Think about judges, too. I mean, there's good judges and bad judges. Um, this is kind of a trivial example as well that doesn't fit Plato's thing that well. But right now in the NFL, there's like a huge, you know, fur and outcry because these replacement officials are screwing up calls. People get upset about that kind of thing, right? Why do they get upset about it? Because there's standards for good performance, and there's standards for bad performance, and they affect people's lives. Yeah. Um, I was on Long Island two Saturdays ago, and I was coming back from a conference, and yeah. this relates to his like bad driving comment, like the how highways are set up. But literally coming off an off ramp, this guy decided to stop in traffic and then back up the way that he came. <laughs> and I. <laughs> I've never yeah. seen that happen in my life. Let's calm it down about Long Island. Yeah, I've, I, I, I have actually seen that before. I've never, and two cars did it. Yeah. It wasn't just him, it was a car after him that did it too. And there was like, <laughs> I don't know, understand how they they you could think that's a good idea at all. Well, no, there wasn't a female driver. No, I don't know. No, that's less, that's less of an issue about like, who's planning the city. You know, there's that old expression, you can't make things totally foolproof. That's somebody screwing up the, the design. And that's where like the cops would come in, right? Hopefully. Uh, no, it, I don't. Uh, I don't know what happened after that. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Yeah, but there are times where like the cops like encourage it. Like in my town, there's like this four corners. Right. It's like the center part of town, and it's normally gets backed up around like three o'clock, five o'clock. Where you can't drive through. It takes forever. Yeah. And they decided to put a Walgreens in the middle of it, and the Walgreens only exit is out onto the four corners. And like when it went into planning, a lot of people like had concerns about it, and the police were the first to back it, and it's a nightmare. Okay. So, yeah, well, yeah, bad, where, bad planning. Well, right, they, like, if, if they're enforcing the bad planning, then they're just as guilty. 
Yeah, by enforcing, I, I meant more like they're actually out on the streets enforcing the laws that are there. That, they, that, would, be, that would be where they were part of the planning process. They would be acting like the guardians. Right, that's what I'm saying. They're like working yeah. together. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, ideally, the, the police, the soldiers, they're actually maintaining order. They're not preying on the people. They're not screwing things up worse. Um, and then, you know, everybody else, they all supply important functions as well. Now, Plato thinks that this is analogous to parts of your personality or your soul. Um, this, this gets a little bit, you know, of a, of a stretch. You know, are you really like a city? Do you have multiple personalities inside of you? It's not exactly what he's saying. What he's saying is that you have um, dimensions you could think of or parts of you that <coughs> do different things. And corresponding to the guardians would be what he actually calls the smallest part of you which is your intellect or your rational part of your soul. This is the part of you that's actually, for the most part, being concentrated on here in college. We're supposed to be developing your, your intellect, right? You're learning things, you're, you're, you know, that's the whole process of education. That's not all that education actually consists of, too, by the way, Plato, but that's a large part of what it consists in. Um, and then you have, corresponding to this, you have what he calls desire or the appetites. Um, and then you have something in between. This is kind of an interesting thing with Plato. You've got this thing that he, in Greek it's called thumos, which is a little bit difficult to translate, which is why in different translations we use words like passion, spirit, um, and another point he talked, another translation uses the term energy, and I don't, I don't mean to, you know, use this in like a physics kind of sense, just like being energetic. Um, and each of these parts of your soul does different things. Your intellect, what does that do? It does a lot of stuff, right? When you have intellectual curiosity, you want to know about something and you go on Google and you look it up, that's probably your intellect driving things. Unless, of course, it's like trying to figure out how to make a cake in a certain way. That's probably your appetites or desires. Um, this middle part of the soul is concerned with things like um, respect, <coughs> self-esteem, um, comparison of you to other people, how you view yourself, how other people view you. Uh, it's also concerned with questions about justice or anger, things like that. Um, now, Plato thinks that you can associate these with the different people involved. He also thinks that you can associate these with different nationalities. Now, these nationalities are all long gone, so this is kind of a abstract exercise in putting this out. But the Greeks had this idea, it's sort of like, you know, the, the um, Goldilocks idea, you know, you've got too hot, too cold, just right. They had this sort of idea about other nationalities. Everybody else, you know what the Greeks call them, right? They had a word for them? In Greek it's Baba Roy. Barbarians. Barbarians, right. <clears throat> and um, why did they call other people Barbarians, well, because they didn't speak Greek, and you know the legend is they called them barbaroi because they thought that when they're talking, all they hear is bar 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 bar, right? And they they divided barbarians up into different groups, though. To the north were those, you know, kind of reckless, get in trouble, want to get in fights all the time, peoples who would occasionally invade. You know, they'd like live out in the open and ride horses and make all sorts of, you know, uh, feasts and, you know, th these are the Scythians and the Celts and people like that. And those people were dominated by Thumos, this, this sort of energy, this, this willingness to, like, get involved and, and you know, be very um, passionate about things. Um, not, not with intellect, though. And then there were the people, you know, to the south. And, and to the south of the Greeks was, you know, the great old civilization of Egypt, massive commercial civilization. To their west, to their east, sorry, was um, uh, all of the, the, the you know, the, uh, 
the, well, the, eventually the Persians, yeah, but, but there's also the, you know, the Phoenicians, even in the Persian Empire, you have these, these people who are like really into commerce. And they associated that with the appetites. Why do you engage in commerce and money making? To satisfy demand. And then the Greeks, of course, who are they associated with? Intellect. Intellect, yes. And, and so, you know, Plato says this, he puts this in Socrates' mouth. Does that mean that the Greeks were all, you know, super, you know, smart people who never got themselves in trouble with this? No, it just takes a little bit of reading Greek history to figure out that wasn't the case. Were all the barbarians like that? No, but you can, you can associate this with certain types of people. You can say that within certain groups, some of these would predominate. If you were to go into a police precinct today, do you think that you would find more people who are primarily intellectual, primarily, you know, a commercial or something like that, or people who are willing to get into fights and, and you know, scrap? Or let's say we take the military. The military attracts a certain kind of person, and doing that kind of job should actually you know, maintain that, right? So these different parts, they, they fulfill different functions. Your intellect, what do you need it for? If, if you don't have it, you're probably gonna be in a lot of trouble because something else is going to call the shots. What do you need your intellect for? Thinking things out, right? Figuring things uh, out that you, you have to decide on, um, figuring out what to do next, all those sorts of things. You actually do need your appetites. If you didn't desire to eat, what would happen to you? Starve. Yeah, you would, your body would starve. If you didn't desire to drink, you would, you would die of thirst. If nobody here ever decided, or not decided, if nobody here ever desired to have sex, what would happen to the human race? It would, it would die, this would, this would be the last generation or actually the little babies that are here right now would be the last generation. Um, you guys would be the second to the last generation. These desires that we have, they fulfill some sort of purpose. Can they, um, well, we'll come back to that in a moment. What about this part? Do you need this part of you? Mm -hmm. This part that sometimes gets angry or when you feel like you've been wronged, um, takes, takes offense at that. Do you need that? You know, some people think that you don't. Plato does think you do. Uh, so does Aristotle, by the way. Some people say, yeah, you want to get rid of that because it needs you know, to be more calm <laughs> without it. But yeah, you're right. You do need that. Otherwise, what's going to happen to you? Uncivilized and unjust. What's that? Be like uncivilized and unjust. And like people will walk all over you, you know. Um, so you need all three parts of this. Can they get out of whack? That's where virtues and vices are going to come. 